Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new F1 Sim Racing World Championship video, this time in Austin, Texas. And of course, as Event 2 always was going, as you've seen in the recent videos, it's always raining in Q1. Uh, so yeah, everyone's been doing their rain dance apparently as we go provisionally P5, but that doesn't matter, as ultimately, in the same situation as previous races, that the last lap of Q1 was ultimately seconds faster and then this time really exaggerated even to the point that some drivers went to the dry compound tyre this is how much the track was changing in the final minutes of the session so it's really really massively important to be the final car across the line in the session or one of the final cars what makes it difficult, of course, because you need clean air for the aero efficiency of the car and to do your lap as good as possible to not risk having traffic. But you also need to be as late as possible across the start-finish line. And with only 25 seconds on the clock in so many cars right now, it makes it a really difficult situation on how you can start your lap. So now you can see we've got the Ferrari of, I believe it's Nicholas Longue, just up ahead of us as we go across the start-finish line. And DRS has now been activated, and we're looking for a bit of clean air. We're deep in the slipstream, but we're going to break too late, and we almost, we almost crash into the back of the Ferrari at the very start of our lap, and that would have been disastrous. And you can see, we've already lost quite a lot of ground to our Delta and the cars ahead because of that as well. But nevertheless, we've still got a lot of opportunities to make this up. A little bit of understeer through Sector 1, of course, just because... We're in the dirty air. We can't really do much in this situation, but ultimately as the sector has unfolded, we've been able to close up to the car ahead of us as well. And this is quite risky because there's still multiple cars directly ahead of us as well. Is Longe, I believe that is Longe ahead of me anyway. I don't have the driver tags turned on, but you can see we're all closing up to the train immediately ahead of us. What is a massive problem because ultimately, now there's a risk that people will battle, slow each other down, and if we battle, we lose. There's no way we can go through qualifying if these cars ahead battle. What I have to say, they were actually really smart in this situation, and to not battle, I was expecting to see one car send it through here and try to go for track position, but everyone held their racing line, no one deviated for that, and this is allowing us all to do our lap in a really good way, and to not have un... Well, not to have an unnecessary compromise towards the end of our lap. Patrick Sefos goes P1. You can see with 1.2 seconds up on our Delta going for the second to last lap. Mari did the fastest lap, so it is Longe just ahead of us as well. 2.5 seconds up on the Delta. Out of the final corner. Where can we go? We go all the way up into P7. What ultimately turns out to be P12. So nice. I'm not going to say comfortably through but just about comfortably through into q2 but it was all dry again and as you can see coming towards the end of our first q2 lap just readjusting back to the dry conditions seconds last corner final corner here really difficult to nail but ultimately drs wide open and we go provisionally p2 well, was very nice to be honest i was very happy with that lap and i was very confident that lap could already get us through the session but we had dry tires to spare and to use so i thought might as well go out one more final time and just enjoy the lap have fun put it together see what happens but yeah i was already like i say very confident that that lap would already be putting us through into q3 so now to be honest, this lap was fun, this lap was enjoyment, and just going out and seeing what we could do and putting the lap together in a good way, breaking down into turn one, let the rotation come through, a little bit too tight on the entry, what made us a bit tight on the exit as well, because we reduced the radius that we could carry throughout the corner, through the first sector, fast left, fast right, fast left once again, through the right hander, setting it up, you can see buttery smooth on the steering wheel, just trying not to scrub any speed off the front tyres, not to overheat the front tyres, not to take any grip away from the front tyres, over the left hand, a bit of wheel spin as we go over the bump of the kerb, that ultimately is a little bit faster to take, high risk, high reward though, through the left hander, pick up the rotation, back on the power, good exit onto the back straight, you can see just over a quarter of a tenth, just under half of a tenth as well, a way from improving our lap time so we're green on the delta coming towards the end of the second sector here through the left hand they're very difficult to nail this one easy to pick up marbles as we did there and you see it's a four seven middle split what i was very happy with once more and you can see going through the final sector now down on our delta slightly 
ultimately not picking up the speed that we are right well what we're needing to do right now and we're half a tenth up so we just got to hook up these final corners nice and smooth with p6 right now provisionally in the session p7 now through the left hander down to fifth gear early back on the power half a tenth back up now hard on the brakes final corner of the lap a little bit wide from where i would have loved to be and we're ultimately going to improve by just about a quarter of a tenth what does see us through into Q3. So my lap time originally would have been good enough, uh, but still nice to go out for the lap and enjoy it and get a bit of learning and reacclimatization done back to the dry conditions. You can see ultimately first lap here with a 182, well, 382, I should say, going through the middle split. What well, was very good. I was very happy with this as well. And you can see the rotation that we're picking up for the final sector is much, much, much better compared to last time as well into the second to last corner really a high risk high reward section of the track of course nicely split there no real understeer good momentum good racing line for the final apex of the lap nicely done as well what's it going to be it's a 943 of course the start finish line putting us provisionally p2 but ultimately dropped us down to p3 now and i was really nailing these laps so now you're going to see what we can really do on this final lap and i was really confident in these situations and like i say no big mistakes on my lap so far in the dry condition, so I was really maximizing what I could do, to be honest, what the setup could do as well in this situation. So with that being said though, here is a final lap of Q3. This is where we'll start for the race. Hard on the brakes, down to turn one, try to turn it in a bit later in Q2, pick up a good rotation. What we do do, a nice traction, finding time down the hill, setting ourselves up for the first sector. Again, buttery smooth on the wheel, through the right, through the left ultimately open up the apex as much as possible and picking up a good racing line through the left hander nicely over the inside curb through the right hander fourth gear pick up good rotation nicely done there and but we're going to be slightly down on a delta as we start the second sector split ultimately 50 meter board let the car rotate down on the brakes back on the power about half a tenth up on the exit but because we carried more speed in slightly slower on the exit now we're reducing that advantage that we have on our delta down the back straight into the left hand 100 meter board hard on the brake down into third gear let the car rotate and the line was pretty good there because we avoided the marbles and was able to gain a bit of time relative to before a free four nine middle sector split and this is not looking too too ideal and we're about a tenth away from where i would have loved to be on this lap but still a very clean very precise lap no real big dramas no real big mistakes so overall i was quite happy with this lap as well so far into the second class corner throw it in good momentum on the exit really close to the white line what can we do on the final apex of the lap and now across the start finish line we're going to be half a tenth up and we just about sneak into the point eights but ultimately puts us P7, one and a half tenths away from pole position. And to be honest, yeah, there was a tenth in this lap. Uh, but overall, I was really happy with this lap and really happy with the session because it was clean, clinical, and ultimately in a very fashionable way to be doing the laps. No real big mistakes. But here we are, lights out, away we go here in Cota on the soft compound tyres. And we're going to launch off the start finish line, already getting past Fabrizio, already looking up the inside of Thomas, deep on the brakes, following Varro Cauton through turn one picking up the better traction on my soft compound tyres and around the outside of Thomas Ronha and now we'll have the track position into the fast sweeping sector one. Also Lucas Blakely who is just about leading this race right now is on the hard compound tyres and it's going to be super critical for us to get past him ASAP and stay connected to the soft compound uh, runners in this race you can see all over the back of Caraton using the battery thinking about if we can have a look at the hairpin but ultimately we decide against it it's not really the risk versus reward that we want to play on lap one of this race so there's basically two main strategies in this race you either go soft medium or you go hard medium we've always tested that the hard medium was let's say a more raceable strategy but also was very risky and very prone to not working out Whereas with the soft medium, you could control a lot more of your race because it's easier to get the track position and then manage it there onwards uh, compared to always having to fight through the pack as we go up the inside of Lucas Blakely into the left hand and we're going to be hanging around the outside. You can see looking behind us 20 billion times throughout this apex just to make sure we're not going to cut off his front wing and then ultimately make an unnecessary crash. But we avoid that nicely and we have gone from P7 
to P4 in the opening lap of the race. But as I was saying, with the hard medium strategy, it depends on a lot on fighting back through the field later in the race, but ultimately is a very nice and solid strategy. But yeah, we went for the soft soft medium of course and as you can see right now we're managing our battery because i know there's no real point there's no real gain from going forward right now it's better for me to save my tires save my battery and ultimately set ourselves up for later in the race in a better fashion rather than using a lot more of the tools to fight now as it would have just left me vulnerable to lucas behind me lap six is really a bit of the crossover with the tires and ultimately the hard compound tire was really going to be faster while i was going through my drop off zone on these laps so you can see i just covered off Lucas into turn one to make sure he couldn't sneak up the inside. Lap eight is when the pit window starts to become a little bit open and this is where you see a lot more people start to close up. You can see Barry Bowman overtaking Freddie Rasmussen for the provisional race lead here in Kota and ultimately lap nine now you're going to see this is where it starts to get a little bit tense with the pit entry to make sure you don't mess up your strategy you can see we leave ourselves in a position that we could dive to the pit lane if we wanted to but ultimately deciding against it lap 10 is really where it's going to start getting a bit more juicy right now so you can see i've cancelled doing the lifting coasting i've cancelled the battery saving and i've really started to put myself in a much closer position behind caraton and freddie rasmussen and by Bowman as well because i want to be able to box and have drs to any of these cars ahead of me on the outlap big snap of oversteer there as the tires are starting to go off the cliff so yeah my strategy was i wanted to box and then make sure i could keep the drs to the cars ahead ultimately no one boxed on lap 10 so I decided against it as well. You ultimately don't really want to be the only car doing a strategy. So you can see now, Barry boxes late, Freddy boxes late. We think about it, but in a split second decision, I knew, I felt it was better to follow Caraton. So I made the decision to follow Caraton, even at the risk of knowing that we can lose track positions. And I knew that Caraton was going to be a bit checkmate in this outlet, or in this inlap, I should say, and also on his outlap later. The reason I say he was going to be checkmated is quite simply because if he didn't use his battery on this inlap, I would be able to overtake him and take the track position. If he uses all of his battery on the inlap to maintain track position, then he's going to be very low and very vulnerable on the battery on the next following laps after the pit lane and the pit stop has been done. So you can see now we still have a very high amount of battery. And we're still four and a half tenths away from Caraton. So now you're going to see, will he use his battery now to keep track position? Or will he try to gain the position back after the pit stop? You can see on the exit now, he's still 100% using the battery down the back straight. So we turn our battery off and start playing the long game. You can see I'm flashing my DRS right now to tell him, no, 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 I don't want to fight. Let's not lose time. Let's keep in the train of the leaders and ultimately go forward. And this was a really key part of this race because you can send it, you can battle, you can lose time in these situations. But ultimately, that's a game for no one. And ultimately, if I sent it up the inside of their caraton, ultimately, I would have lost race time. He would have lost race time. And we would have lost the DRS to the race leaders. It would have been very difficult to recover. So sometimes, and sometimes in racing, playing the long game and not just going for the immediate overtake will help you and benefit you later on in the race as you will see how it unfolds and you can see the amount of cars on the hard medium strategy is basically only five cars on the soft medium strategy and everyone else is on the hard medium strategy so i knew we had our work cut out in this final stint we had to work smart we had to work efficient and we had to not lose time battling otherwise we'll be so vulnerable to the people on the alternative strategy you see barry freddy just flashing up over the hill patrick seaforce was able to undercut us as well and you can see now lap 13 i've still got half of my battery up ahead and this is exactly what i was talking about with caraton you can see now he's flashing on his rear light here and ultimately putting us in a very good position with 53% on the battery that we close into him and really gain quite a lot relative to him as well. Lap 15, I knew his battery was low. I knew my battery was relatively high compared to him and was able just to blast past him on the straight and easily go up into the next position. So he flashed in the DRS there just to say thank you for not making it too difficult, not wasting each other's battery, not wasting each other's time and ultimately being very smart and playing the long game as well. 
Same situation with Patrick Seafoss. I knew his tyres were starting to go into the drop-off area and his battery was very low from having to catch the cars ahead. So now I was able to fly past. But now I've got a very different race strategy to play. I've got good tyres. I've got fresher tyres than the cars immediately ahead. But now I've only got 24% battery. What means you're going to see me doing massive lift and coasting to regenerate that battery right now. Because I knew I felt, I just knew everything right now that if I battle the two cars ahead... Ultimately, I'm going to leave myself vulnerable to the Lucases, the Thomases, and everyone who's on the alternative strategy. I have to build up my battery right now before I can worry about fighting them. So you can see, lap 19 here, I've already got the battery back up to nearly 50% with massive lifting coasts. I was able to do a really good first sector quite often and pull the gap to Caraton, and that saved me quite a lot. Lap 23, you can see 75% on the battery, big lift and coast again, but Lucas Blakely has now arrived on the scene. Stage enter Lucas Blakely on those super fast, super fresh medium compound tyres. Lap 24, and you can see we've got everyone back up behind us, but you, I'm, I'm leaving a gap. You can see I'm favouring the throttle on the exit of the corner to leave a gap to Freddy Rasmussen ahead. Two reasons. I want to make sure that I get clean air and I want to make sure I don't overheat my engine unnecessarily. But I look behind myself and I see Lucas send it. And I have to be honest, I was a bit like, <laughs> oh no, we're in trouble. <laughs> because I always know, I love Lucas, he's a great guy, but I know Lucas loves a bit of a send. And ultimately, when Lucas is sending it like that, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> like, it was not a comfortable moment in this race, but I knew I had 100% on the battery while well, 97 now, and ultimately with one and a half laps to go, I knew that Lucas's battery would be low. I was actually turning around off my seat in the stage to watch the broadcast live to see what battery Lucas had because I knew that they'll be riding on board with him. Lap 27, I go defensive just to make sure he can't look up the inside. He tries to go around the outside, but nothing doing there. And we were going to be riding on board for the remainder of this race. But yeah, as I was saying, I was actually turning around in my seat, live in the race, going down the straights to watch the broadcast to find out the battery level of Lucas. Because I knew he's the car on the move. He's the car making the action right now. So they're going to be showing his onboard as much as possible. And through that, I was actually able to gain information that helped me quite a lot. And you can see on the pitch straight, you can see just making sure Lucas can't have a dive up the inside. And yeah, it was one of those situations I could have started attacking the cars ahead. But again, as I said earlier in the race, if I just attacked them, ultimately it would have left me vulnerable to Lucas. So you can see down the hill, I actually dropped back from Freddy Rasmussen as well because I could see my engine was overheating and I needed the clean air over my front wing to make sure I can maximize his first sector and give Lucas the least possibilities available to get a run on me over the hill, down the hill, using the battery again, two and a half temps to Lucas Blakely, hard on the brakes for the hairpin, have to get the rotation, have to pick up the traction, and we do just that on the exit now, opening up the DRS, you can see using a lot of the battery, it's how Freddy Rasmussen is going past Bio Boom and up ahead of us, and this is going to be allowing us not really to do too much with the cars ahead, you can see we left ourselves with 50% battery, just in case the cars ahead started battling, and we could slip through, I was going to gain nothing by using the rest of that battery down the straight, so ultimately I saved it to maybe have an opportunity later on in the race, just taking a different line, seeing if I, if I could feel the mirrors of Bari, make him a bit nervous but of course I can't he's such a great driver great talent so calm this season that there was no way I could fluster him into a mistake there but still worth trying nevertheless through the second to last corner into the final corner ultimately we started p7 we're gonna come home p3 in the austria austria austin gp across the line now and that was a very very sweet race as you can imagine and ultimately I've got to go watch the um, Imola GP as it's now 2pm at the time of recording. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this race. I hope it will be a very good race in real life. Hopefully you've enjoyed this race as well. And I'm going to go watch the real life race. See you later. Thank you for watching. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye.